A family friend who is a co-founder joined us for the lunch. He was a chronic bachelor and, uh, you know, you know the thing about chronic bachelors, right? So the topic of discussion was random at the table and all of a sudden this guy called upon my dad and said, Mr. Alex, if you have any trouble with your kids, just buy them a bike. They'll ride it into a bus or their truck and problem solved. So I thought, at that point, I thought, yeah, that's the end of my biking. But here I am, not just riding them, I'm also building them. Yeah, we built high-performance electric bike. The amount of things that's getting recycled is increasing day by day. The vehicles you drive is a result of a lot of recycled parts. For example, aluminum for the chassis, uh, body, engine parts, etc. And best of all, there are on hundred percent recycled dinosaurs. Isn't that amazing? Or is it? The world is shifting towards a new era, and we are placed right in that curve that we can decide how the curve is rising. Every aspect of our life is changing. So is the case with automotive industry. Almost every auto manufacturers is, uh, manufacturers are shifting towards electric. Some of the fastest vehicles out there on tracks are electric. The ability to deliver huge amount of torque at any RPM at the smallest switch of the throttle is enabling these vehicles to achieve this feat. One of the fastest vehicle in Pikes Peak hill climb is also electric. Uh, speaking of which, when I started working on my uh, electric bike project, I constantly used to get this question. Will it climb a hill? Well, my answer is usually uh, another question. Why do you think trains are powered by elec electric motors? You know. Uh, we have only seen and experienced those electric scooters that crawl through our streets. And many doesn't even realize that those are not considered as motor vehicles. Which is, which is one reason you don't need to have a license or a registration to ride those things on the road. And they are powered by a puny motor. By comparison, your mixer grinder is about three times more powerful. Yeah, three times. We want to change that paradigm. We want to show people how capable an electric vehicle can be with the simplest of the technologies. It is as simple as you have a motor, you have a battery pack, and a circuit to control the power. Unlike a, you know, an IC engine which has got a thousand parts. See, my point here is not to spark a debate between electrical or mechanical engineers about whose holy book is more righteous and infallible. Because if you remember correctly, back in 1900s, electric vehicles did have an edge over the other kind of personal transportation. Ferdinand Porsche was one of the first to realize the pot potential of an electric vehicle. He built his electric vehicles out of the state-of-the-art technologies available at that time. His electric vehicles was the Tesla of that time. And his electric car, uh, if I'm not wrong, P1, out on all the other cars in a 24-mile road race in International Motor Vehicle Exhibition happened in Berlin in 1899. And he won the race by a huge margin of 18 minutes. 18, one eight. By today's standards, that is like years. Today's races are won by you know, a margin of milliseconds. Well, that is the past history. Now to have a slice of the future history, we, a team of six, started building a, an electric bike. The technology is so advanced that now you can get your electric vehicle to be more than 90% efficient. 
And when it comes to upgrading an electric vehicle, it in most cases, it's as simple as doing a software upgrade. Before upgrade, it was 0 to 100 in, what, 3.6 seconds. And after, it's 2.8 seconds. I mean, how cool is that? This shows the versatility of an electric vehicle. People of the two-stroke generation always have a tinkle in their eyes when mentioning the power delivery of uh, two-stroke engines. I hope you might have you know, tried some uh, two-stroke vehicles. RX-100? Samurai? Yeah. So you might, you might be knowing how, you know, how powerful those vehicles are despite the small size of the engine, right? So it is actually comparable to an electric vehicles, or it's not comparable, but electric vehicles are better any day. Uh, so if you want to bring that back, or like, as I said, exceed the expect expectation, learn to God. But here is the real problem. Many believe that electric vehicles won't survive as there needs to be a huge infrastructure to support the ecosystem and it took 100 years to build the current gasoline infrastructure and it is really difficult to replace it uh, with some other kind of energy sources but not for electricity it is already there the delivery system is already there with minor modification to the grid, you can get to recharge your vehicle anywhere you want. During the steam engine times, uh, when the IC engine came up, you know, people said, this is not going to catch up with the steam engine. Now, do you feel a striking similarity in the thought process? The revolution has already started. There are thousands of people building their electric vehicles in their garages, and most of them are quite impressive. The fastest street legal drag, you, you, you know what a drag, uh, drag race is, right? So the fastest street legal dragster is electric and was built in a garage. But when all is said and done, we at Hound Electric has a different philosophy. Like the way the electric starter motors kick-started the IC engine revolution, we believe that something is yet to come. Something that will revolutionize the electric vehicle and make it more reasonable. And suddenly, everyone will start buying it. Well, it could be a new power source, a battery maybe or even a nuclear reactor that could be fitted under the bonnet or between your legs in case of a bike. But one thing is for sure. The tractive force on the wheels will be delivered by an electric motor. So I would go as far to say that we are building a cradle for the future technology so that we can switch out the battery pack with the new power source when the time is right. Thank you.